Oh, hello. How are you? 2020. Do we need to talk about it? No. I don't care who you are. In some way, shape, or form, everybody suffered during 2020 at some point. Like, it was just a really rough year. We know this. Um, but you know what really helped me get through the year and at times when I didn't even realize I was feeling low was to count my blessings and just be thankful for the things that were going well in my life or how things could have been so much worse. And that really honestly kind of helped me because, you know, I think even sometimes I, I didn't even realize how much it was affecting me, you know, and I think that it's just such a hard thing to go through and no one's gone through it so nobody can really help anybody get through this we just gotta get through it um so yeah i hope this year is a lot better and we can move forward happy and at peace and healthy so let's talk about why you're really here okay i know you're here for the makeup and i am a queen who delivers to my people so today's video is my 2020 year-end favorites video. Ah, oh, we finally made it to this point. These are literally the best videos to watch. I don't know how people say that favorites videos don't do well because they're just, to me, they're the best. They're the best. So the way I'm kind of doing this is if I bought it in 2020 and it's new to me and I liked it, I'm gonna talk about it. Okay, we know that I love Maybelline Fit Me, Truffle Tees Lip Liner, Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer Stick, Hula bronzer, we know this. So I'm not gonna talk about those, but those are things that obviously I do love and use all the time, and you guys know this, okay? So let's start off with some complexion products. The first one I have is the L'Oreal Fresh Wear Foundation. Now, this just ticks all our boxes, right? It's got the long wear, it's got the full coverage, it's got the great finish, it's got the amazing shade range, the amazing packaging, and of course, the most amazing price. But what really blows my mind about this foundation is the fact that over the years when I have tried those very, very liquidy but high coverage foundations, I feel like that was kind of a thing for a little bit, like, you know, weightless but so full coverage, but they were always so thin and I feel like on me, they would just like dry down as foundations do and it would just like suction and shrivel up every little crack and crevice and pore on my face. And even by like the time I was done doing my makeup, I'd be looking at myself like, oh my God, I'm a thousand and two. This does not do that. For some reason, even though this is a little bit more of a liquidy texture, it's that very like lightweight consistency, but a very high coverage. It just looks beautiful and healthy on the skin. It doesn't cling, it doesn't dry up, it doesn't get weird. It's amazing. And if you are a drugstore foundation girl like me, mm -mm -mm, love, love, love this. Now, this next product, I have loved their brush cleanser. Cinema Secrets Brush Cleanser is the best, okay? It is truly like changed my entire life. It cleans your brushes in like 2.5 seconds is amazing. But I have to say, the real Cinema Secret are these bad boys. The Cinema Secret Foundation Palette. Now, these are like, these two are corrector palettes. So they're supposed to be like foundations uh, or some, excuse me, not foundations, concealers. And this is supposed to be a foundation palette, but they're essentially the same formula. These are so great. I use these in my kit as um, concealers. And then this is kind of like my own foundation palette. This is the A5, or excuse me, A500. I'm so dyslexic, 500A series. So obviously these are shades that match my skin tone, but they have a million and thousand one shades, okay? I love these. Professional grade concealers and foundations, cream palettes like this are just beyond gorgeous because they're very full coverage. You only need to use a little bit of product to get the effect that you want and they give the most natural skin-like finish. Now what's so amazing about these is that they are made for a more advanced skill set, right? A lot of these palettes are. However, this one I feel like anybody can use. You want to use a brush? Yes. You want to use a sponge? Yes. You want to take your fingers to it? Yes. It's just ready to use. And I find that like with Graftobian, RCMA, Bobbi Brown, those ones, they, t they take a little bit of a learning curve. They, they take a little bit of finessing or fidgeting with. And these don't. These you can just use whenever. And they're so creamy and blendable and easy to use. I just absolutely love them. 
and yes you can buy these individually like the pans do come out but if you wanted like a whole palette depending on whether you know you get a little bit lighter in the winter and you get a spray tan in the summer or you just want to be a little bit more bronzy one day or you like to mix and match you can have just every foundation you ever need to have right it's so good i love these Moving on to concealer. Now this one I have not had in my collection that long. This is the Dose of Colors Meet Your Hue Concealer. Mine is in the shade 06 Light. I do consider this more of a brightening shade. I think I would have to go a little darker if I wanted more of a concealer shade, but this is awesome. Tons of shades, has a great packaging with a great applicator. It does smell a little bit like paint. Don't know what that's about, but the formula is fantastic. So I just, I don't think about the paint, um, but I am kind of painting my face, right? I love this bitch. Okay. The, for some reason, this is like a very tacky concealer. Like when you put it on, it really locks into place. But on the flip side of that, it also is not hard to blend out. You know, you're not putting it on and then going, oh my God, this is taking forever to blend out. And now it's drying down and now I'm freaking out. No. It's not that at all. It's nice and creamy and full coverage. I love this concealer. However, the concealer that I used the most this year that was the star of the show is the Ilia True Serum Skin Concealer. <laughs> now, as an oily skin person, when I see words like serum in the name, I get a little bit like... Okay, here we go. This is not going to have any coverage. It's going to be really oily. It's going to move everything around. It's going to be a hot freaking mess. But someone said they really liked these. And so I was like, okay, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's get it on. I love these. Everything I just said about what I thought these concealers were, not true. It is full coverage. It blends really well. It is dewy, but it's not so dewy that it moves the makeup around or it's hard to work with or it's getting patchy or it doesn't work well with powders. None of that. This is the most beautiful concealer of my life. I think they had a change in packaging because um, I just got these two like at the beginning of this December, but I've been using this one since like May or something. So this is two yucca this is one point uh or 1.5 suma and one chicory so i have like a more tan shade then i have like a face concealing shade and then i have a brightening shade and these are fabulous i had to have three of them that's how strong my love is if i'm doing a comparison between similar concealers i think this is better than the nars radiant creamy I do because this to me is more full coverage where I feel like NARS in my opinion is more of a medium to full and I think this one's a little bit more radiant and has a little bit more coverage it's just mm, mm. I'm not kidding you guys if I had to pick a product of 2020 that I just blew my mind like top three this would be in it 100% Let's talk about some primers really quick. Not that I'm like the primer queen or anything. You guys know truly a good skin prep is going to give you an amazing look on your makeup. I don't always feel that primers are 100% necessary, but the primer that I'm wearing today is the Becca First Light Priming Filter. This is a sample, and once this is out, I am getting a full size. This is beautiful. It gives your skin this light lavender hue, and lavender is great for brightening. It has a little bit of luminosity and it just does your makeup so well i mean what do you guys think it's really good i really really like this and i thought at first i was like oh, i don't know but i know why these were so hyped up now even the becca backlight priming filter oh my god amazing as well but this one's my favorite next up this is truly a, an absolute queen if i could think about a product that was a true iconic queen it would be Walita Skin Food. This was mentioned to me. I saw I saw a lot of makeup artists using this, and I can understand why now. This is a workhorse of a product. You can use it on your lips as a lip balm. You can use it on your um, dry cuticles, your crusty elbows, your dried up cracked feet. You can use it to tame flyaways on your hair. You can use this as a face moisturizer, an eye cream. A highlight it's amazing there's just so much you can do with it and it's such an interesting formula even with it being so thick it just works they don't make it in this like metal packaging anymore I think it's in like plastic packaging it has a very 
interesting kind of lemony herbal scent. Um, but I love this. This is so amazing. If you love a highlighted dewy look, but you don't want shimmer or color, this is so bomb. Like, just look at this. I'll put a little bit on the back of my hands. Little bit. Right. Okay. And then you see my hand, right? Now, when I rub this in, Ooh, just look at that. Isn't that amazing? That's how your skin looks. And so you say to yourself, okay, well, this is going to be like very greasy. It's not going to work well under my foundation. No, it's amazing on underneath your foundation as well. It just has this amazing grip to it that just keeps your makeup on, looks amazing. And again, gives this beautiful dewy, glossy glow without shimmer or pigment love. So last, but certainly not least, for complexion, are these bad boys. The Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Powders. I have mine in two shades, Y305, oh, Y, yellow undertones, R260, R, red, pink undertones. You get me. These are so beautiful. They come with this amazing sponge. So if you would like to use this on its own, because it is a foundation powder, you could just like hit this up and then like You see what I mean? Like, it's so beautiful. This is another workhorse product as well. Um, if you're unsure about whether a powder is a foundation powder or not, well, first of all, it will say foundation powder, but if you could use it in place of foundation, it is a foundation powder. Like my translucent powders, no, I would never use it as foundation, but these I could use as foundation. So if you want something really simple and easy, you can just take that, wipe it all over your face, you have a full coverage matte velvety look, but you can take a brush and use this to set the face. Amazing. Now, what I love is that you are getting the best of both worlds because this is a foundation powder and there's so much pigment in it. You are not only setting your face and locking in your makeup, but you are also adding coverage. So, you know, back in the day when I used to go in with like three layers of foundation, five concealers, 10 pounds of powder, and then after 10 hours, you're like, why does my face look like shit? Because that's just, that's too much. My makeup is much better now that I do my makeup with heavy concealer, cream bronzer. I use a small amount of foundation to kind of mesh the two together. Then I go in and I set my under eyes and my T-zone with a translucent powder. I set my bronzer with a very dark translucent powder or a powder bronzer. And then the rest of my face, I just set with these and it looks amazing. It allows your natural oils to come through while setting your face and making you look absolutely flawless. I freaking love these. I think that they're very comparable to the Charlotte Tilbury powders in formula. Obviously the Charlotte Tilbury doesn't have as much pigment as these, but I think the formula and how silky smooth and buttery soft these look is the same. Amazing. Okay, eye primers, I have none. I use my back pain pots and my Urban Decay Potion Primer and they're the best ever. You can't tell me otherwise, okay? I don't care. I don't have any brow products either because I feel like brows are one of those things that like once you find like yo thing, like that's your brow thing and your routine and you have got it down, you there's nothing, you know what I mean? Like eyeshadows, yeah, play with whatever eyeshadows. Lip products, yeah, sure, whatever. But when it comes to brows, that's my thing. That's how I like them. I use ABH Dip Brow Pomade in Ebony. Or if I want to go cheap, I use NYX Tame and Frame Brow Pomade in black, and I use a brow gel. And that's how I get these bad boys, and that's the way it's going to stay. However, I do have the most fabulous brow gel for you. This was also a recommendation from a um, makeup artist, and I can tell a makeup artist probably would like this product because one, it's absolutely humongous. You get six ounces of product here. Jeez Louise. Um, it's sanitary in COVID times. And even before that, sanitization is a huge key component to any makeup artist kit. And they're very, very affordable. I think this thing is like four bucks. Okay. Like what? Um, I love these. I just put a little bit on the back of my hand. I rub it out and then I rub my spoolie in it and brush up my brows. It's amazing. Gives you a grape soap brow effect, laminated brows, whatever you want to say. It just delivers. It's so good. 
The one thing I really, really like about this is that with my Benefit brow gel, which I do like and I do keep in my purse because it's small and it's just easy to use if I'm on the go, where this I keep more like on my vanity. This has a longer dry down time, which I kind of like because when you set the brows in place, you kind of go, oh, okay, yeah, I want to put a little here, a little there. You can kind of like tweak and fix. It's a little bit more malleable because it takes a little bit longer to dry down where the Benefit one is just like, okay, I'm on dry. So I like to use this just a little bit more if I'm not in a hurry, but obviously it's a little bit big. So oh, I'm shopping everything, but they're both fabulous. And if you're looking for something on a budget that's going to last you a really long time, that's your guy. The queen of never buying eyeshadow palettes has three for you, honey. Okay. All right. Now, listen, the Jaclyn Hill palette is still here. Okay. You can still go and buy it at any time that you would like. However, the formula has changed. Jen Loves Reviews found this out because um, I think she went to like go see her family or something. And it was like her sister, or her friend, or her cousin, or somebody was like, hey, yeah, I got the Jaclyn Hill palette and I do not like it. And she was like, <laughs> excuse me like what like there's no way it's like the best palette and if you guys know me you know I think it is the best palette <laughs> and so it was true once she tried her palette out she was like this is not the same formula and apparently back when they did their rebrand they changed the formula and yada 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 my conspiracy allegedly this is purely my opinion i have absolutely no facts at all remember when jacqueline hill first came out with the jacqueline hill palette and she was like oh morphe went and got all new machines to press my eyeshadows and blah 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 right i think they just went to a better manufacturer now obviously the jacqueline hill palette was really highly anticipated it was very hyped up people were excited i was excited and when it launched, it sold out in like 40 minutes, right? And, and it would have these restocks where it was like just selling like hotcakes going, right? Now, obviously, they probably still sell Jaclyn Hill palettes. And it's not that it's a bad palette. It's just that a lot of people are probably already own it. And since then, she's come out with the Vault Collection. She's come out with the Jaclyn Hill 2 palette. She's come out with her own freaking brand where she's launched two products. Like, Morphe itself has gone on to launch a lot, a lot of other products. And so, you know, obviously just the hype dies down they, and they probably weren't like selling out like crazy like they normally were. And I think that they were just like, let's just move the production back to our facility because we're not making these big, huge sales and big amounts of money. So why don't we just move it back to our production, which <laughs> is a little hit and miss. And I think that's what it was, to be honest, because I'm sorry, like you got new machines, but for some reason your new machines are not cranking out the same quality and then like why reformulate i mess with perfection you know what i mean because i truly think that, that formula is perfection i love it why would you mess with that you know so that's why i think what i think but again what do i know <laughs> so this left me devastated out in the cold in the gutter shivering hoping for a new palette and i had to research a ton of palettes because I honestly, I'm not trying to sound dramatic, but I built my whole collection around my Jaclyn Hill palette. There's so many palettes I didn't buy because I'm like, oh, I already own that in the Jaclyn Hill balls. Why do I need it? You know, and I had built my whole individual eyeshadow collection around that palette because when I would go do clients, I would just bring my individual eyeshadows and my Jaclyn Hill palette. And that's what I worked out of because as a makeup artist, you guys watching, you know, you don't want to carry around 18 palettes in your kit. That's ridiculous. So I had kind of like two curated palettes palettes that worked for everybody I think like sometimes I would bring like my Juvia's Place palette if I didn't know the client and didn't know if they wanted color or not but most people I could just work out of those two palettes so needless to say I was absolutely devastated I was so mad it was the last straw for me and Morphe so I searched and I searched and I searched and I finally came across this bad boy Ooh, this is the Be Perfect Cosmetics clientele palette. Clientele palette. I mean, it was made for makeup artists. In collaboration with John Makeup Artist, she is amazing. She does great work. And again, like Jacqueline, she knows what the people want. She knows what makeup artists want. She knows what they use. She knows what they need. And so, oh, fabulous mirror, I must say. This palette is perfect. Now, I wasn't looking for a dupe for the Jaclyn Hill palette, but I was looking for things that the Jaclyn Hill palette had, like mattes and shimmers, cool tones and warm tones, 
light transitions, mid-tone transitions, deep transitions. It needed a black. It needed a brow bone highlight. Look at this palette, you guys. It is just perfect. You can make so many amazing looks. You have some great pops of color in here. It's just fabulous. The pigmentation is there. The blendability is there. It's just perfect. And I, I really think this is so great. So if you are feeling sad about your Jaclyn Hill palette, I highly recommend this one. Amazing. Now, I may be a little biased because I love Dose of Colors so much. It's like one of my favorite brands ever. But I did pick up the baked browns palette now of course i have my pretty cool palette which was probably one of my most used palettes of all time to be honest but this is such beautiful new packaging i have like the pretty cool has like the shiny um packaging with like the cursive but this like modern like soft touch packaging is so luxe and i just love their eyeshadows dose of colors makes some of the best eyeshadows in the whole world um now, this is very opposite of what I normally go for. I normally go for something like the Clientel palette, the Jaclyn Hill palette, where it's like this big, just smorgasbord of eyeshadows. This is not. This is five shades. They're all matte, and they're all one kind of tone family. But this is amazing. I'm wearing this today. It's so beautiful. It's just, uh, it complements everything. It works well with my pretty cool palette. And these formulas, you guys, are like so insane. So insane. And I really, really like this brush. I love this part because it's easy to make like a dragged out wing. Um, and I love this little brush because it's perfect that it's pinched at the bottom because it's really nice to get right on the lower lash line. So I actually use the brush a lot. I don't know. I'm like, I wish I would have kept the one in the other palette. But yes amazing great for travel nice and small and if you're just a very simple gal or guy right here last but not least in my eyeshadow palette category is miss natasha denona now i feel so incredibly fancy to own this okay i look down upon people now i'm basically a celebrity of the highest class because i own this palette um all jokes aside, I love this eyeshadow palette. Now, you may think this is boring, neutral tones. I totally get it. What I love that she did with it was she took a concept that we are used to, neutral, warm tones. We all know the neutral, warm tone game, okay? And I feel like she came out with something that was just so different and so fun to play with. Now, the mattes, incredible, but they're just mattes. I find the true value lies in her other shades. So you have shades like this one up here, this like really dark like indigo and deep dive, I think it's called. This tint is like a satin. It's not 100% a matte, but there's like no shimmer in it either. It's like a nice satiny color. Then you have these shades like true copper, this purple, the this one, uh, this one, that they are all shimmers. And then you have these two right here, which are duo chromes. And then you have these two over here, silk and true bronze, that are foils. And when I use this palette, I get very like inspired, I get giddy, I get excited. I'm just like, I want to create something I don't know well. And it's such a simple palette, but there's so much you can do with it. And whatever your definition of bronze glam is, you can find it in this palette. So whether you like a more rose gold, a more bronze, a more gold, a more copper, a more red you're gonna find it in here. Beautiful, beautiful palette. I have a little bit of palladium, this like little brown. I kind of used it to mesh the, like on the outsides, like this shimmer I have, this rose gold shimmer or something else, but I use that to kind of like blend it in with the dark shade. So I love this palette. I think it's amazing. And I love that she has these smaller $65 palettes because personally, I, can't, I cannot justify spending $130. I know you're probably like, yeah, that individual's collection you have, girl, probably is like $500. But for some reason, I just can't pull the trigger on her $130 palettes. Like, uh. So I'm glad that she has these because I think the formula is out of this freaking world. Like, it really is. Like, I'm not gonna lie. It's really freaking good. Natasha Jenner Bronze, gotta get it. Okay, mascara this year, KKW Beauty Mascara. I really, really liked this. It has a very similar applicator to 
um, the Better Than Sex mascara, but I don't find this to be as clumpy or goopy or hard to work with. And I think it's a tubing mascara. Let me know down below. I think it's tubing because like sometimes I'll just, I can just like pull it off where other mascaras I use get kind of like weird and, and soft and clumpy. This one just like comes off. I think it's tubing, but I really like it. And I have an eyeliner this year, a MAC Costa Riche. Now, I love this because so many times I feel like brands, when they come out with brown eyeshadows, they always come out with something that is very cool toned, very dark, like almost black. And this is a beautiful kind of warm shade. It's so stunning. And it's just so beautiful. And I know it's a coal, so it's meant to be um, kind of like smudged out and stuff like that. But it's so pretty. And sometimes I just like run this along my lash line and smudge it out to like a nice wing. And I think the light tone of the brown really brings out my brown eyes. It's just so pretty. I, I will continue to buy this. I freaking love it. Now, let's do some eye topper eyeshadow type individual type things. Okay, so the first one I have to talk about, oh my god, I freaking love this. This is the eye tints from Armani in the shade Camel Smoke. I have a backup of this. I love it so much. As you can see, it's like this beautiful brown, but you can see that slight iridescence in there. It's so pretty and it's so light, you know what I mean? Like it just goes on as like this nice wash of color to just define the eyes. It's very easy to blend out, very easy to put on. Like it's just so freaking easy. And I love this doe foot applicator. It's nice and pointy so you can really get in there and like really make a shape, but you can also like run it along your lower lash line as well. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I'm obsessed with these. It took me forever to get this though. It was always sold out. It's fabulous. Now this is a liquid eyeshadow, but it has a little bit more pigment to it. It's a little bit richer, a little bit more intense. Um, and it doesn't have the iridescent sheen that that one has. And it's not like an eye tint. So it's not going to be this like kind of thinner consistency. This is the Dominique Cosmetics liquid eyeshadow in the shade Shy Girl. I just, I love this packaging it is so pretty and this color is fabulous it's this really beautiful like purpley mauve shade oh oh i love it and i and i like this one a little bit more for like liner and stuff because it is more pigmented where the armani one is more like an eye tint it's thinner this one i could get on a little brush and like make a sweet wing i love this Next up, this is a MAC pigment in the shade Tan. This is what I have on my eyelids today. <gasps> MAC Tan is like so incredibly beautiful, you guys. Like, I'll do a little like swatch for you because OMG, it's just gorgeous. And I recommend getting like the little travel size one because Jessica Braun told me that she got the big one and she's had it for like five years and she's never made a dent in it. This is just the best color. Oh my god, it's so pretty. I love wearing this. I really love rose gold. And if you like the shade SBN in the Jaclyn Hill palette, this is a really good dupe for it. Just saying. Next up, Dose of Colors. No, I'm a big fan. They're block party shadows. Now, I just got one of these out because I have like a ton of them. And I have all the ones in the Desi and Katie palette. This is the most interesting formula ever. Like... I want to say this is a pressed glitter, but it's not. It's like, oh my god, this is Heart of Gold. It's a nice golden shade. Oh my god, it's so pretty, you guys. Oh, these make the best eye toppers. They're so intense. They have such good colors of these. Like, I love them. And at first I thought about depotting them, but I love the packaging. And I, I like how small it is because look, I can put these two together and travel and that's all I need. You know what I mean? So I like having them in the individuals, but I have like Caffeine Queen, I have Encore, I have Reflection, I have Shall We Dance, like just the most amazing colors. Like, such a unique formula. They're such like an amazing, like just go on top of the lid, like give it an extra pop of pizzazz. Like, oh, I can't, I can't. Next up, another dose of colors. Sorry, this is one of their eye, um, what are these called? I'm sorry, the Ideal Duos. So you have a primer on top and then you have the color on the bottom. 
I personally think that they mixed this primer with this pigment and created the block party shadows. Um, but I love these. Oh my God, they're so intense. Here, so I'm gonna do a little bit of the um, cream first. And this is in the shade Sunset. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of the pigment and just tap it right on top. And it's the most spectacular, metally foiled uh, of your life. I wore this on Christmas day and it looked insane. I loved it. Ooh. Ooh, what you know about me? What you, what you know about me? Incredible, I love that shade. Last but not least are my Hourglass Scattered Light. I have more of these, but I picked my two favorites, Reflect and Smoke. I had a little bit of Reflect topped off on top of Tan from MAC. Reflect is more of like your rose gold kind of shade. These are so bomb. Mm -hmm. And then smoke is probably my favorite shade. It's like this like pewtery, you know, taupey champagne shade. Now, hourglass is hourglass, okay? And they're not going to have like crazy blues and purples and things like that. They're gonna have more neutral colors, but they're still so incredible. Like they're right down here. Like, oh my God, these are the best. I've been so into like lid toppery type shadows this year. Oh. Mm. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I feel so goofy for talking about these because they literally had a whole launch this year where they came out with cream blushes and cream bronzers. And now I'm like, Hey, Fenty Matchsticks. <laughs> I know, I know. Literally, you guys, every single yearly favorites, people always have the new Fenty cream blushes and bronzers in it. And I'm just over here like, <laughs> but I love these. They're so good. And I know they're going away, but if you can get your hands on them, they're so bomb. This is Amber. This is Mocha. Oh, I love them. Packaging, stunning. Okay, now here I have Mocha, Amber, and then Mocha and Amber mixed together. So I personally can't use Amber by itself because it's just too cool tone. It's too gray. It looks dirty on my skin. Um, but I wouldn't use Mocha as a contour shade. So the two of them mixed together is perfect. And if I want a little bit more of a neutral bronzer, I'll go with Mocha. But these are so amazing, you guys. The formula is very similar to the Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer Stick, where physically it's a cream product, but it has that matte dry down to it. Like they're just so so amazing I wish they were not going away there's so many colors they're so good um they blend like a dream wear like a dream like I have nothing bad to say Fenty please don't take these away please <laughs> oh yeah and who doesn't like to do this 50,000 times a day keeping yourself entertained okay Margie's Fab really stepped out of her comfort zone this year, okay? I really got into creams. I know, who am I? Talk to me three years ago. I would have laughed in your face if you asked me to use a cream. This year, so one of the first creams I tried were the MAC Glow Play Blushes. These are crazy good. MAC just knows how to do the damn thing. You know what I mean? Like they know how to pick great shades. Like they have neutrals, pops of color. They have stuff for lighter skin tones, darker skin tones. They have really interesting shades that you wouldn't normally find. You know, we always see like the peachies, the pinkies, the bronzy, but we never see like a lavender, you know what I mean? Like, and they just, oh, they do it. And I know we've seen this formula before with like Stila and ColourPop and Lancome, but like they really perfected it. I feel like these give the most beautiful glow without being shimmery or too intense. They are also a little bit lighter in pigment and thinner in formula. So if you're someone like me who had oily skin or uh, creams are just not your thing, 
then I would definitely check these out because I definitely, they're not like balmy or heavy or sticky or anything like that. They're so lightweight. I find that if you use your finger, you're going to get a little bit more pigment. If you use your um, brush, you're going to get less pigment. So it just depends on whether or not you want something intense or you want a sheer wash. So the colors that I have, I have Cheeky Devil, which is like this pastel baby pink. Looks dark in the pan, but it's actually light when you put it on. Then I have So Natural, which is like this peachy bronze. It's probably my most used one. And then I have blush please which is this beautiful mauvey pink i love that i can mix and match these i love the packaging it's very new and fresh but also modern and sleek and classic just mm, love those the beach please blushes from tower 28 beauty this is in the shade magic hour this is definitely like the color of the year like i feel like this was the year of like rosy bronzy blushes and this shade is gorgeous they also have like a more pinky shade and a more orangey shade but this one's my favorite i just love it it's so pretty again the packaging is modern and sleek and different um this is a little more balmy like as you can see like me just rubbing my finger in there it is definitely a little bit more heavy and look at that swatch you know but damn if this isn't gorgeous just look at that color you guys oh I did the Patrick Ta thing today and I tapped a little bit of it on top of my powder blush which was the hourglass blushes and then I just tapped a little bit of magic hour on top and it gave like the most insane beautiful glow and again when I saw that I was really scared you know because I was used to MAC glow play blushes I wasn't used to that and so when I tried that I was like oh and this actually looks good on my skin and like my makeup doesn't move around and like oh I, oh my gosh and I don't think those are too terribly priced for a kind of high-end brand I think they were like $14 or something very inexpensive i want to own them all must own them all this is truly an innovative product excuse the uh decal being rubbed off but this is the charlotte tilbury hollywood flawless filter for a superstar youth glow i am in the shade light too this is insane i have it on my face today underneath all of my makeup i highlighted my face with it now this is kind of interesting because it's not a lot of times that we come across a product that is truly revolutionary. You know, we may change colors, we may change the formula, but to come out with a like completely new product is kind of insane. This is not quite a foundation, but it's not quite a liquid illuminizer. To me, when I put this on, I'll do a little swatcheroo for you guys. It looks at first like foundation or concealer but it has too much shimmer in it like see how it just gives like the most most gorgeous glow it's like i wouldn't use this as a foundation but it's also like a really subtle beautiful high shine like highlight and i think it was samantha ravendall who was like this is a highlighter that is your skin tone like why are we always going for like pinky golden white highlights when we could just wear a highlight that's our skin tone and I was like, that makes a lot of sense. So I really love this. And as an oily skin person, I don't feel like it disrupts or disturbs my makeup. You can really see through like, oh my gosh, it just gives the most beautiful glow to the face. I just, I really, really like this. And yes, it's expensive, but you use such a little amount of it, or at least I use a little amount of it, that to me, it, it like you'll have it for forever, you know? And you could also mix it in with your foundation or concealer if you feel like it's a little too matte and you want a little bit more glow to it. This is amazing. I will buy this for forever. Okay, the only lip liners I have this year are from Gerard Cosmetics. This is my favorite shade in Sugar and Spice. It is the most beautiful kind of warm brown with like the slight plummy undertone. Mm, it is so good. But I love Cher. I love Melrose Place. I love Mudslide. I love all of these. And you know what, you guys? For like a plastic crayon kind of... Um, and you know, you guys, for like a plastic um, lip liner, I think these are fabulous and they sharpen really well and they're extremely affordable. I really love the shades that they picked. Like they're very complimentary. They're not like, oh, why do they have that? Or no one would wear that on their lips, you know? Love these. Very creamy. Stay in place. Mm. Okay, 
lip products omg why do i have lip products when we wore masks most of the time yes i am asking myself these same questions i have no idea but i have them <laughs> so i'm gonna get through these as quick as possible i have two from mac the first one i have is mac flesh pot oh the best nude ever i first discovered this in one of my like pro lip palettes from mac and i was like oh my god i have to get this in a full size it is beautiful. It goes on a lot lighter on the lips and it creates the most beautiful ombre lip look. And what I like about this is that it is a shape shifter. So depending on your pigmentation of your lips, your lip liner you put on, the liquid lipstick or lipstick you put on underneath, it is going to change the color of this. It's beautiful and very versatile. I love it. Next up, I actually have the Hindosh collaboration the mac maker series i love hindosh okay and he's easy on the eyes as well mm -hmm. but i love the way he does makeup and i love that he came out with this lipstick he picked a luster finish from mac which means it is going to have a more glossy finish and it's going to be sheer but buildable okay so he wanted something that like watch like i put it on one coat okay another coat, another coat, another, you know what I mean? And then you can really build the color up. He wanted the perfect mixture between pink, red, and brown. And this is just stunning. You can also use it on the um, cheeks. It's beautiful. In hindsight, I wish I would have gotten two of them, honestly, because they're amazing. Next up is Bite Beauty. I have always been a fan of Bite Beauty, especially especially their lip crayons so i tried their new lip crayon formula this is in the shade hard cider oh my god it's so stunning it's the most beautiful warm brown with like a plummy undertone to it it's right here oh it's so pretty and it's one of those really easy peasy lipsticks that you can just put on without a lip liner without a lip gloss like it just looks so good and it's nice and skinny easy to throw in your bag it's like the best formula ever i don't feel like there's any change in like the old formula versus the new formula it's just creamy ultra pigmented amazing then i got introduced to this bad boy this is guava puff i'm gonna be honest i hate this packaging like hate 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 this packaging but the formula is gorgeous i love this lip gloss it is the most beautiful color and oh my gosh like i don't know if you guys can even see it but it goes on like you see my lip right now it's it's just beautiful it's a beautiful formula it's a beautiful color it's amazing for nudes especially when your nude is a little too nude and you're like oh i just need something to like yeah this is your guy amazing amazing formula just change the packaging and then it would be like my favorite gloss ever Two from Buxom. Love Buxom. You guys already know I use Celeste all the time in White Russian. Well, I actually got White Russian Sparkle. So it's like a sparkly version of White Russian. And I got Dolly in the lip polish. OMG. I'm wearing Dolly today on top of a lipstick and lip liner. But these are fabulous. They're plumping. They're ultra glossy. They have a beautiful sparkle to them. Like these are just the bee's knees. I love Buxom's lip glosses. And I want to thank... Um, Whitney Hendrix for this bad boy. I love Dolly and now I want everything Dolly. I love it. Another one from Gerard Cosmetics, the Gerard Cosmetics Supreme Lip Cream. Now this is truly an interesting product to me. It's very different from anything that I've tried. It is, it is a liquid lipstick to me. It is a liquefied lipstick to me, but it's not matte. It has a slight sheen to it, but it's very pigmented. Um, it, it almost feels like it's a little hard to work with. Like it's a little bit of a stiffer formula, but that's what helps it adhere to the lips. And again, with this beautiful color in the shade Envy, you don't need a lip liner. You don't need a lipstick. You just put this on and it's so beautiful. Here it is, Raha. Mm -hmm. And if you are someone who likes pigmented glosses, you might want to try this because it's really, really good. Tower 28 love their glosses very affordable in my opinion for a high-end brand um this is in the shade cashew right here it's a beautiful warm toned gloss and it is a milky jelly so it does have a little bit more pigment it does have that kind of milky consistency but i do have one of their other um just lip jellies that's really fabulous but i do wear this one a little bit more and it is a really cool formula it's a nice like gel and it gets very high shine but it's not heavy or sticky or goopy 
I know everything we got in a gloss, but these are great. Wore this so much this year. And because it has a little bit of that tint, I sometimes feel like I can just wear that. I don't necessarily need a lip liner or lipstick. I can just put that on, have a nice tinted gloss. Looks really fab. Now something from my drugstore gals, this is the Essence Shine 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 Lip Gloss in the shade Behind the Scenes. If we're being honest here, you could pretty much shut down the lip gloss game with this guy. Um, it's a clear gloss. Mine's a little bit tinted because I don't clean the wand off after I use it. I know, sorry. But... I love the smell. I love the applicator. I love it. This like kind of arrowhead flat kind of like mm, ice the cake. But these are two dollars, you guys, and they're so freaking high shine. Like I cannot even tell you. I'll put it under the Tower 28 one. Like for something that's two dollars and this glossy. Like what? What? Everyone needs this in their life. And they don't just have that clear one. They have other ones that have a little bit of pigment to them. Get that. And last but not least is the Revlon Ultra HD Matte Lip Color in the shade Forever. Forever, ever, forever, ever, forever, ever, forever, never. Um, <laughs> comment down below if you know that. You're my people. This is something that I got from Harouche. Of course, Harouche is the goddess of makeup and I praise her and worship her so I had to go and get this this is the best liquid lipstick it's truly such a beautiful color it's a nice um, warm brown but it has a pink undertone to it and it looks so great on so many different people it's a very flexible formula it dries down probably 90% of the way and the rest of the way it does feel a little bit more like a true lipstick it comes in tons of colors I would love to get more of them because the formula is just so comfortable and pigmented but locks into place you know it's just like everything that you want Oh my gosh, you guys, we have made it. I know that this was a long one, but we did it. These were all my favorites of the year. I do have a part two coming where I will do my favorite hair care, skin care, fragrance, and body care. But we just had to take care of the makeup today, okay? Because we had a lot of stuff. But yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed my favorites. Maybe I inspired you to get a little after Christmas gift for yourself or for somebody else maybe. And yeah, here's to a new year. Cheers. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.